Hi there. In this video, I'll explain the concept of data virtualization in layman terms. Now, we are not going to look at any specific product, but we will look at data virtualization as a concept and how it's beneficial and where it can be used. This is a architecture diagram of a typical organization. Usually you have multiple upstream systems from where the data needs to be sourced into downstream systems. So by upstream, I'm referring to all the icons at the above, at the top of the diagram, such as Salesforce, point of sale, Facebook, and so on. The downstream systems are the systems that need data to process them. For example, data mart, forecasting, they don't generate their own data. Instead, they depend on data that is generated in other systems such as Salesforce and Facebook. Now, and downstream application like data mart will often need to interface with these multiple applications through whatever method is supported, such as FTP, HTTP, APIs, database calls, and so on. Often, these methods, the number of systems, they change. Data Mart may need to source data from multiple other systems. The interface may change. As the architecture of one of these underlying systems change, so do the connectors. To address this, organizations these days have come up with the concept of a data lake, right? Data lake, what we do is we source the data from the upstream systems and the data is persisted in the data lake, meaning the data is stored. So that way, downstream applications like data mart and forecasting applications don't have to connect with all the upstream systems. Instead, they can connect to one large data repository called a data lake and then they can use the data from there. So this avoids having to access multiple systems and dealing with the multiple interfaces. However, this presents a problem. The problem is that of data freshness. What is the guarantee? that the data in the data lake is current, is the latest that is available. What if there is a latency between the upstream system providing the data to the data lake? Often, there are needs for downstream where they need access to the most current information and not historical information. Besides, data lake is a complex platform. It not only requires a lot of effort to put together a data lake, but also it takes a lot of time for the data to ingest, to be ingested into the data lake. So in other words, from the point the data is generated or from the time the data is generated in the upstream and till the time it is actually available in a data lake, it could have passed couple of minutes or hours in or even few days in some cases. But there are certain applications which need to interface with the upstream system directly to have access to the current information. Besides that, the data lake itself, as I said, is quite a complex platform. There are a lot of moving parts. There are multiple points of failure as well all the way from data ingestion to metadata management and one of the most popular ecosystem is Hadoop that is used to build a data lake. Now Hadoop is not without its uh, shortcomings such as batch processing, right? So uh, there are some needs where we really don't want to persist all the data. Instead, we want to get a real time access to the live data coming from the upstream. That is where we bring in the concept of data virtualization. So data virtualization is a platform 
which you can right now think of something like a data lake but without data persistence meaning we don't store any data so as you can see here this platform still sort of works as a data lake acting as a middle layer through which we can connect all the upstream systems and the downstream systems to see how exactly it works let's look at a closer example so here is the expanded view of the data virtualization platform let's suppose we are sourcing data from Facebook and as any other cloud API provider cloud service provider we usually get the data in terms of structured files like JSON or CSV files so here let's assume that Facebook is giving us the data in JSON format using a data virtualization platform we can convert this JSON to a set of tables on the fly meaning the data is not stored anywhere instead the JSON is manipulated or parsed in real time and instead of exposing as a file it is exposed as a set of tables now as a developer you will have control over how to model these tables what is the table name what is the column name what are the data types those are things that you as a developer have control over okay and now these tables can be exposed to the downstream systems such as data mart or power users now let's suppose the data mart starts referring to these tables now the best thing is data mart has always access to the latest information from Facebook so that way there is no latency at all we are not storing data so we if there is something wrong with the data it is something wrong with the source system itself right so you avoid a lot of uh, uh, you know points of failure you have the source and you directly have the destination you are not storing the data anywhere data is converted on the fly the other benefit is tomorrow let's suppose we add another system this time it's a cloud storage that is giving us some CSV files now some of the data from the CSV files may be used to populate one of the existing tables all of this manipulation can be handled within the data virtualization platform again here there is no concept of storing the data the data is converted on the fly into a set of tables or into set of business objects now what does it mean to the downstream nothing the downstream shouldn't be concerned about this change at all because all these changes are handled within the platform the downstream systems are completely unaware they will continue using the tables as is as it is so no matter how many changes happen in the source system all those changes can be handled gracefully within the data virtualization platform while there is minimal or no impact to the downstream systems this is the concept of a data virtualization platform so a quick summary a data virtualization platform hides away all complexity of multiple endpoints from the upstream systems it acts as an abstract layer providing buffer from sudden changes so meaning an upstream systems could suddenly change the interface or the file format or you may completely replace the system with a different system all of those changes can be still managed within the data virtualization platform it provides real-time data so like I said unlike a data lake we don't store the data here it is real time so anytime you request some data from the data virtualization platform it will in turn request data from the upstream and get you the relevant data at no point in time is it going to save the data in any repository however in certain cases it is possible to extend the data virtualization platform to involve some sort of a caching 
So let's suppose there is some data that you request very often, but the data does not change. For example, the list of uh, your followers in Facebook, that list is not going to change that often. So uh, something like that can be cached within the data virtualization platform so that you, you reduce the amount of information that is retrieved from the upstream system every time. So these are some, some uh, customizations that you can do on, in the data virtualization platform. And since we get the real data, real time data as is from the source to the, uh, to the downstream, the, the trust of the system increases with the users, right? So the users are now able to see the real live data. They, they, uh, they really don't question about, okay, you know, what is the data ingestion? Are we storing the data anywhere? So all those questions are, uh, you know, th there's no, there's no room for such questions in a data virtual virtualization platform. And it saves a ton of resources while avoiding data integration and persistence. So if you were to set up a data lake, that's a huge project by itself. You have to set up the infrastructure, you have to install the software, set up the Hadoop clusters, and then the data ingestion uh, is something that is quite time consuming. Not to mention the diff many different options that, that are there that you have to play around with until you find the perfect solution. All of this can be avoided if you have a data virtualization software. Also, in some cases, avoiding a data lake is not possible. Let's suppose you're using the data lake for storing large amounts of data. You still need a data lake. In that case, before you start building a data lake, it would be a good idea to use a data virtualization product to do a quick POC. What are the different upstream systems we have? How can I connect to them? And can I, am I able to see a connected data from all these systems. So an analysis like that is better done using a data virtual virtualization platform as a POC before moving on to a data lake. Now, at this point, I would like to stress upon the point that data virtualization is not a replacement for data lake. It is an alternative. However, you need to keep a few things in mind before going ahead with a data virtualization platform. You see, data virtualization is perfect where you have small amounts of data that you need for your analysis and the data is not requested multiple times. If that is the criteria, a data virtualization product is perfect. However, if you have a need for storing large amounts of data and you are processing, you need to process all of the historical data from time to time. Maybe you're doing some aggregations, uh, you're running some machine learning algorithms on, on some massive amounts of data, or you're using it for forecasting. If that is the use case, data virtualization platform may not be the best solution. You still may have to set up a data lake kind of a platform. So that's about the data virtualization platform. Here are some of the products in the data virtualization space. You have Denodo, we have Conweaver, Data Virtuality, Delphix, Gluent, and Red Hat JBoss data virtualization platform. Thanks for watching this video. If you found this video useful, please don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. I'll be back with more videos. Thank you.